What's up, what's up, what's up? Hope you guys are all well. What's been happening? So I just got back from the gym, that's why I'm a little bit late tonight. I had a fat, fat pump. Boy, I'll tell you what, guys, eating all this food, so, oh, by the way, I should say, for those of you who don't know, I'm crushing about a thousand grams of carbs a day, every single day. Um, today, I'm actually gonna go over that. I'm gonna hit about 1,100 grams, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, if you feel like shit for most of the day, but when you're in the gym, you feel like a bulge, which is which is pretty, pretty wicked. So I'm hoping some of you get to experience this soon with me. Who we got online though? Let's say hello to everyone. We've got Azza, how are you, Big Rig, Michael Raw, Kelly Satin. Good to have you on here, Kel. Who else we got? Say hello, everyone. I want to know where you're from. If you haven't already received my emails or got the updates or anything, I'm coming to Perth this week. JCF, my company, is sponsoring the Josh Leonardo Witch Classic. We're going to be there. You should be too. I'll be around chatting to you guys in the hallway of the Perth Convention Centre uh, at midday. Uh, so I'll be around there from midday to you know talk with all you guys. So if you're in Perth, Saturday this week, I'll be there. My whole team will be there. All my competitors will be there. We're going to clean up this show in Men's Physique Bikini. So yeah, we are keen as much as to see you. Who else you got on here? Vinny, good to see you, bro. Harold, you too, Luke Charles, Maddie King, Maddie Lynette, Kerr, we'll see you there, bruh, we'll see you there. Alrighty, I'm just going to share this in the Shrek community, do my multitasking thing, then we're going to get into it. If you have any questions, get them in now. What I'm going to do is, as soon as your questions come up, we're going to start answering it. Then after that, we're going to go into how you can get bigger and eat a shitload of food while also staying lean. Because a lot of people ask me, it's like, oh, hey, James, isn't it impossible to, like, you know, gain muscle and stay lean at the same time or eat a lot of food and, you know, stay lean? I even get shit like, uh, oh, how are you? How are you not getting fat by eating all those carbs? Um, and I was like, there's a very good reason for that. I'm going to go into it tonight. I also had some absolute fucking spud talk Dan last night saying, oh, don't eat like James because, you know, the same, if, if you eat like this, then you're going to get fat. It's like, well, yeah, no shit. I've prepped myself for like the last however many years to be able to eat this, this many calories. Um, Christ, I cut on 3,000, 4,000 calories. Like, there's, there's a course, you know, that's not normal and you shouldn't be like that. But the thing is that you can be like that because, well, I've done it. I was just a skinny little white kid, um, you know, back in the day, uh, who, who just decided to get big and eat a shitload of food and optimise his body. There's no reason why you can't do the same thing. I mean, geez, Christ, the other day I was talking to one of my boys, Petey Williams, and uh, Peter's never eaten really above 2,500 calories in his life. I'm like, all right, Peter, welcome to the team. 4,000 calories a day for you, my friend. Uh, enjoy. Good luck with that. And, uh, and so far, Peter has been pretty much like smashing food on food on food on food and getting bigger and leaner. In fact, he's put on five centimetres across his chest and lost, I think it's about five of his waist as well. His waist keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. We keep bumping his calories up and up and up. All right, so you've you got to think outside the box to do these things. And we're going to go through all this. All right, let me stop talking shit and I'll put this in the uh, shrimp community. Done, bang, close it up. Okay, like, who else is on here? Rob Vetter, how are you, legend? Nick, good to have you online, my man. Um, Ravio has just asked, hey bud, how are you? How much sugar do we need per day? Ravio, we do not need any sugar per day. You literally do not need any sugar at all. Sugar is not essential. Amino acids are essential. And fat is essential, okay? That's what we need. The sugar, doesn't matter, man, doesn't matter. However, if you want to get big, you're going to inevitably end up eating a fair bit of sugar. That is why, you know, I'm crushing these bad boys and I'm crushing this. Oh, for those of you who are bulking, these things are a fucking godsend. Rice flakes, all right? Get amongst them because they're delicious, really easy to go down, and they do digest really, really well. Mm. One thing I know... Over the last week, you know, I was indulging in a fair bit of, you know, shit food. Some stuff like Togo Pops and shit loads of, of these bad boys. And my skin started getting really, really bad. So I was like, okay, sweet, well, let's think about this. Why is my skin getting bad? Number one, digestive load. Because I'm putting in fucking 6,000 plus calories and 1,000 grams of carbs a day. It's going to suffer, all right? My digestive system's going to, you know, find it a little bit tough. And then the other thing is, well, okay, what food am I eating? Now, theoretically, I shouldn't be having any bad effects from the sugar that I'm intaking because I've balanced it out with getting enough of the good stuff like the, 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 the phenols and then the, the fiber intake, micronutrient intake, all that. But I thought, well, fuck it, let's go a little bit more conservative here. And so I've switched out 
and I'll lower sugars in favour of more complex carbs, what you can normally call healthy carbs. And my skin's got a whole heap better. My digestive system's got a whole heap better. So that's one thing you really, really need to be very, very careful on. Because as soon as your digestive system starts going downhill, everything starts going downhill with it. You need to look after that as priority number one. Fuck your macros, fuck your calories. Look after your digestive system first. First and foremost. After you've got that established and it's looked after, then yes, go and look after your calories, your macronutrients, and then the rest of it. Cool? Ruth, learn that shit. All right, what have we got? Josh Wilson just asked, Hey, mate, just wondering if you have any advice until I see an endocrinologist. My natty test is 1.1 and free test is 40 and it's super hard to motivate and recover. Fuck me, Josh. Those are very, very unhappy levels of testosterone. I feel for you, mate. That must really, really suck. Dude, the best way to get your testosterone up is to eat more food to start with, but that depends. Man, I can't give you any really general advice. Uh, I mean, you can try taking some astragalus, so you try taking some deaspartic acid, increasing your protein intake, increasing your saturated fat intake, reducing your carbohydrate intake, but increasing your calorie intake at the same time. Um, yeah, man, that'd be really good. A keto diet would probably work quite well for someone like you, but that's without, that's me saying that without actually knowing you, so maybe I shouldn't have even said that. Right. Look, go see your endo, fucking get in to see them just like ASAP. You should be able to find one somewhere because that fucking sucks, man. What they're most likely going to do is put you on TRT. That is a band-aid fix, okay? It's going to work and it's going to be good and I'd actually say that's a fucking very good option because, man, we need to get you feeling better straight up. You know, that fucking sucks, man. 1.1, that's the lowest level, level I've ever seen. I've got chicks who've got higher testosterone levels than that. No offense. Um... Yeah, bro, get some fucking TRT or HRT prescribed to you. Hopefully, they're forward-thinking enough to fucking do that. Don't use their fucking bullshit cream. The cream sucks. It's good for chicks, not for dudes. Um, and uh, and then, yeah, man, go... Uh, uh, yeah, man, we fucking need to, need to sort that out. Go talk with them. Get your stuff sorted. Get a plan in place. And then, if you're unhappy with that, come see me and we'll, we'll start working on some other shits. Who we got? Shabab, how are you, bro? My man. Shabab just said, hey mate, how the fuck are you leaning out on 4,000 grams of carbs? How does that work? I'm not on 4,000 grams of carbs, I'm on 1,000, right? 4,000 calories coming from carbs. I'm not really getting leaner. Um, oh, I, maybe I am. I'm getting a few more veins and stuff popping up. Whether that's leanness or not, I don't know. Um, I'm still feeling pretty tight. So what I'm doing is I'm having roughly five, four to five days where I'm having 1,000 grams of carbs. Um, and then I'm having like two, two to three days where I'm having less. The reason for that is because I feel like fucking shit. All right, guys, it's not actually easy to eat this much food. In fact, it's very, very fucking uncomfortable. Uh, it's, it's not fun. I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at that food and I'm like, fuck this, all right? It's actually not that good at all. Uh, and I'm there and I'm chowing away my food. I'm not hungry and I'm full. I feel like vomiting and then so I just keep chowing, 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 chowing. And just because I fucking want the result. I take those couple of days, you know, to not have that many, have that much food, drop down to like 4,000 calories, and that's, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's fucking it's fucking hard. You need a break from this. Um, perhaps it'd be better for my gains to keep eating every day, but shit, man, I look at the holistic side of things. My digestive system needs a break. My brain needs a break. You know, all that. When you're eating this much food, it, it's it's really genuinely mentally taxing. You feel lethargic all the time because what happens is. When you put in all these carbs, you get this massive release of serotonin and, uh, and GABA, okay? At the same time, you also get these massively fluctuating levels of insulin. See, I normally carb backload through the day. So it means I have fats there, and I've got, a, I've got very steady blood glucose levels. My insulin levels aren't really spiking too much. Yeah, they're getting small spikes of protein here and there, but the amount of glucose in my bloodstream is relatively stable throughout the day. So that's what I'm used to, stable blood glucose levels, good brain function, feeling wicked. And then at night, I then go and smash 300 grams of carbs or so around my workout, whatever, and I feel pretty good. But now, because I've got to get in 1,000 grams, and that's why I'm trying to hit 1,000 grams of carbs every day, I'm fucking smashing carbs whenever I can. I wake up and I eat carbs, you know? I'm going through the day and I'm just eating carbs, 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 carbs. All right, and, and you honestly, you just don't feel great at all. Um, so yeah, man, that's, a, that's my long-winded little spiel. I can't remember what, what I was answering. Timmy Donovan, how are you, legend? Aaron, how are you, big fella? I'm not even going to try and pronounce your name, bro. I apologise. I'm white and I'm Australian and I'm fucking useless at doing, you know, names which are not like four letters long. Um, 
But yes, thank you, mate. I'm trying to stay shredded. I will stay shredded. Papa Shred's always going to be shredded. Papa Bolt just doesn't sound right. I'll never be Papa Bolt. Always be Papa Shred. Jeremy's just asked, mate, do you find the high water intake dilutes or slows the digestion of all that food? I think you recently said you're smashing 10 litres a day. Yes, correct, and I'll go over that. So first of all, why am I smashing 10 litres of water a day? Well, when you ingest carbs, you need to really be having 10 mils of carbs per gram, sorry, 10 mils of water per gram of carbs. This is because when you store the carbohydrate in your muscle, you need roughly four mils, well yeah, you store four mils of water per gram of glycogen, okay? And so that massively, you know, takes up a lot of water. You also need to go and digest all that stuff. So for that, you need enough, roughly enough, uh, another six mils of water because you're gonna piss some out. You know, you're going to need some to push through the digestive tract, all that sort of stuff, all right? And so that's why I'm smashing 10, 10 liters of water a day, all right? Which is fucking hard. Does it slow down the digestion? Yeah, fucking nice, man, it's hard. I'm constantly just, uh, I'm constantly just digesting, 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 right? When the water goes in, it makes me feel full, makes me feel bloated for the next 30 minutes until it passes through. So it slows that down. So what I try to do is I try to minimize the amount of water that I'm drinking while I'm having you know, my carbs, particularly my starchy carbs. My sugary carbs, it doesn't matter too much, right? It doesn't affect that. But yeah, no, it 100% does. It, it massively slows the digestion. But further on from your question, and we're going to apply it more to you guys who are not being fucking muppets and smashing a thousand grams of carbs today. Um, when you, there's a lot of research out there which goes into the research, pseudoscience. There's a lot of pseudoscience which says, you know, should you drink before, excuse me, got the gummy bear, should you drink before or after a meal or with a meal or whatever? <coughs> Doesn't really matter, right? People say, oh, but drinking water will neutralize the acid in your stomach, which therefore, you know, decreases the efficiency at which it digests your food. Yeah, no, not really. If your stomach wants more acid, it'll fucking make more acid, okay? It's not really that, that, uh, that bad, okay? So drinking water around when you're eating food doesn't matter too much. I hope I answered that question well, Jeremy. Um, Chris the Anchor. Chris just said, mate, I'm just wondering how to take all the stuff in this. Do you put it all down at once? Because I could put things, most things down. But that is horrible, or do I make something separate? Um, Chrissy, good question, brother. Really, really good question. With the, uh, with the supplements that I take, yes, there are some very, very foul ones. The ones that you're going to be taking, yes, they're foul too. All right? You just put them down. You just do it, bro. Right? If you can't take it, then get it in tablet form and just swallow them down as well. Cool? Marty, big Marty, how are you, legend? Guys, for those of you who don't know, Marty's fucking killing it. He's dropping a kilo a week, which is over 1% body fat every single week. Fucking nailing it. Jason Henderson just said, is zinc important for testosterone production? Zinc import is important for fucking everything production, right? Zinc is super, super important. I eat most of my guys at around 100 milligrams a day, so my chicks are on 50 milligrams, you know, and up to, up to 200. When you're trying to gain mass and you're trying to get leaner, you need a shitload of zinc. Zinc's one of the minerals which you just get really, really low on really, really quick, right? Oh. I'm trying to get this down. Right. Let's get into it. Okay. How to eat, eat heaps of food. How to eat heaps of food and stay lean. Okay? Like real lean. This is one thing that a lot of people struggle with. Like always. Okay? And here's what it comes down to. In order to stay lean, you need to get lean first. Okay? You need to get beneath 10% body fat. You need to have abs. You need to keep the abs. And you need to make sure that your body is used to maintaining this set point. So there's this thing called the set point theory, which applies to both weight and body fat. If your body is used to being at a certain weight or body fat, it will naturally try to hold on to that weight or body fat. There's a lot of research in this. It seems really, 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 you know, bullshitty, but it fucking, there's a lot of research behind it. Done by people much, much smarter than me, right? All these fucking nerds in lab coats, they're the ones that do it, so trust them. Um, so we've got this set point, okay? What we want to do is we want to work with our body to keep this set point. We want to hold this set point of body fat. We want to keep it there. So how do you hold a set point? How do you change a set point? You get to a certain body fat percentage and you stay there. You keep it there, right, for as long as possible. So once you diet down, and you diet, 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 
you achieve a level which you're quite happy with, which for my guys is roughly 6 to 8% body fat. We will then try and hold them there for four weeks or so, at least a month. And when we hold them there for a month, their body stays there and gets used to it and adapts it. From there, we'll either diet down further and find a new set point, or we'll begin our bulk where they're lean as fuckery. All right? By the way, you've got to be lean, nice and lean around that and hold that set point as long, long as possible. From there, you introduce more and more and more and more and more food. You strategically change your macronutrients around depending on your size and your variables and whatnot. And that way you grow. So you're growing, you're getting leaner, you're growing, you're getting leaner, you're growing, you're getting leaner all the time, okay? More food, more food, more food, more food, more food, okay? And that is how you stay there. It's as simple as that. First, get lean. Second, maintain that leanness for a period of about four weeks while increasing your calories as quickly as possible without putting on any fat. Right? That's how I do it, and that is how I've done it with so many of my guys. Go on. Radio, ask all your questions away, guys. Right? Because there's a lot in that, and I'm not sure if everyone's going to take it in, so if you've got any questions, ask it. Now, moving forward, as far as the training and the supplementation, let's stick with training first. When you are looking to get bigger, and you're looking to eat a shitload of food and you're looking to stay lean at the same time, you need to tra tailor your training to you. That is one thing that we do with all our guys. We try to tr get the right training plan, the exact right training plan for everyone. 10 times out of 10, we'll pretty, no pretty much nail it, all right, on the head. Some people respond better to higher reps, some people respond better to lower reps. The thing is, higher reps versus lower reps Really, there is no fucking difference in it in the general population. It doesn't fucking matter. It really doesn't change much. What does change is that when you are looking to be optimal and perform as well as you can, the difference between high reps and low reps is massive if they suit you. So take me, for example. If I'm here doing 15 reps a day going balls to the wall, I will die. I will look like crap. I'll start gaining a lot of body fat and I'll start losing muscle. I'll start getting small. I'll start deflating. On the other hand, if I'm hitting like six to eight reps or so, or less than that, and I'm going really, really heavy, and that's it, boom, I look great. I stay lean, I get bigger, I get stronger, I feel absolutely amazing, okay? This applies for you guys too. So if you die on high reps, then you shouldn't be doing high reps. If you die on low reps, you should not be doing low reps. You need to go what you're, with what you're best doing. The easiest way to do this is to do what I call the high school test. In high school, did you gravitate towards lifting heavier? Were you a sprinter? Those sorts of things. If you can work that out, you can therefore determine which one you're going to be better on. Another theory is neurotransmitter assessment, which we sometimes run, the Brave Minute test. We do, that, we do that for a lot of our higher level guys and girls. In this, it pretty much tells you which neurotransmitters you're dominant with, and therefore you can then prescribe the appropriate exercise regime, which will suit that neurotransmitter profile. It is very, very accurate. I actually find it to be very, very highly accurate because people who are more uh, have higher levels of a certain neurotransmitter, therefore have more predominantly fast twitch muscle fiber or white muscle fiber or slow twitch muscle fiber or, or red muscle fiber. And that's how we predict it and that's how we can be so accurate. If you guys want to learn more about how to do that for yourselves, we'll come train with us, shoot us in the inbox and we'll help you do that, okay? So therefore, what we've covered is, we we'll cover the nutrition side of things, where you get down to that, that homeostasis, you get down to that set point, you create the new set point, and then increase calories from there. We've covered the training, where you suit the training to yourself and what you're best at. And then as for supplementation, there's a whole heap of really cool shit you can do with supplementation. Numero uno is minimize stress through supplementation. That is the biggest thing. Stress is the biggest killer of gains by anything. I've been working with people for years now. I have coached over 1,500, shit, it's probably 1,600 clients now. And the number one thing that I can say 10 times out of 10 that fucks your progress is excessive amounts of stress. If you cannot manage your stress and cannot deal with your stress, you're going to go backwards at a rate of knots. I've had people do this this prep. They've overworked with work. They haven't slept enough. They haven't had balance. And then bang, their body just all of a sudden shits itself. And we have to bring them back, rest, and go through supplementation. All right, really, really hardcore supplementation to reduce that stress ASAP. So what you need to do with your supplementation is reduce your stress. Get your 5-HTPs in, get your GABA in, those sorts of things. Enhance your sleep, work for your digestive system, manage the five stresses. Five stresses, of the, again, for those of you who don't know, are your emotional stresses, so it's like your relationship, your family, that sort of stuff. Manage that. Your psychological stresses, your work, 
you know, your perception of stress around you, your physical stresses, how much are you training, how little are you training, those sorts of things. Uh, your resting stress, how much sleep are you getting, how much time out are you getting, and then of course your digestive stress. What's going down your gut? Are you taking drugs? Are you drinking? Are you eating shit food? Are you eating food which is shit for you? All those sorts of things you need to look at in depth. Right? In depth, you need to look at all that. Cool? As I said, the best supplements are your 5-HTPs, your GABAs, your uh, before bed like sleeping shakes, all those sorts of things. That's what I recommend. On top of that too, if you're having issues with your digestive system, a bit of beta and ACL and some digestive enzymes when dosed appropriately are absolutely mint. Rightio. Joshy Wilson has just asked, when I get that lean, I get far too skinny and lose so much strength that as soon as I start slowly increasing my eating, everything else gets better, but my abs start to disappear. Although now with such low test, my gut is always just massive. Josh, mate, we just need to get you fixed up. That is the biggest thing, dude. You just need to fix up. As soon as you have low test, your body starts going to shit. They've done studies on it and they've shown, this, this is what a bloke I was speaking with the other day, a highly, highly intelligent dude. He was telling me that there are studies to show which, you go to show which low test will result in stuff like Alzheimer's and, and brain degradation. You know, I know firsthand that low testosterone correlates like immediate with bad gut health because it ruins your neurotransmitters. And there is no wonder that you're having issues with, you know, when you get lean or when you, you, know, you try to increase your calories, everything's just going haywire. We need to fix your body. Your body's under stress. Low test is a very stressful situation and it needs to be fixed. What else we got? Chrissy Simon, how are you, legend? Said, hey, mate, how long does it normally take, say, a bloke like me to get to that point where I'm down to under 10% of body fat? and are able to up my calories to put on more size. Hope that made sense. Yes, it made perfect sense to color. The answer is, it doesn't matter about time. Stop stressing about time. When you put a deadline on something, you immediately put a stress on, because you think, book, I've got to get lean in eight weeks. I've got to get lean in eight weeks. And that's why I fucking hate eight week challenges. In fact, we're restructuring our whole way we do, we do plans, because we're saying, you will train with us for a minimum of 12 weeks, and thereafter it's based on your goals. It's not based on fucking time. Time doesn't matter. Time is nothing, all right? It's a, it's a fugazi, fugazi. Well, you know, you know I'm getting that. Don't worry about the time it takes to get there. You're in no rush, man. You're in no rush. You're not going to suddenly not be able to get lean in six months. What we need to do is we need to focus on making you lean as quickly as possible, as healthily as possible. I can get you down to sub 10% body fat within about two weeks. And you know what I'll do? I'll say, Chris, lock yourself away in your room. Don't see anyone, don't speak to anyone, don't eat, all right? All you're gonna do is exercise every single day, do your bench, do your squats, do all that, all that sort of stuff, plus run 14Ks, and you will get to under 10% body fat within, you know, actually, you could probably do that in a week, all right? Are we gonna do that? No, because it's fucking retarded, okay? We would never, ever, ever do that. Not even for my competitors, and I make them suffer. You want to get down as low as possible, as quickly as possible, as healthily as possible. Time doesn't fucking matter. Don't worry about it, big fella. Keep grinding. You're already fucking smashing it anyway. Adrian's just said, I've got no Delta Zone left, big rig. I'm having the 5-HTP before sleep. Would you recommend taking some GABA as well? If so, how much? Big fella, I just get some more Delta Zone. Just bring some in, all right? Delta Zone, resurrect anything that you can get. Jump on eBay, buy it there. There are a few, you know, risky sellers. Uh, who, are, who are still selling it, and yeah, so just go buy it from them. Big Joe Athar, how are you, legend? Joe just said, hey mate, if I'm still sleeping around 10 to 12 hours these days and I feel like I'm getting lazy in my daily routine. Yeah, dude, the thing is, when you sleep 10 to 12 hours, you become less stressed. When you become less stressed, you become, you feel like lazy because you're a type A personality, Joe. You know, you work your ass off, very much a very motivated person. What you're talking about is you're talking about a lack of you stress, right? So there is a, there's, there's this theory going around called eustress, which is euphoric stress. This is when stress makes you feel good. This is why I like punishing myself for competitions. This is why I like working 12 or 14 hour days. This is why I feel better when I sleep fucking four hours a night and eat fuck all. It's because of this feeling eustress, where stress drives you, stress makes you feel great, okay? Even if it's not healthy for you. What you need to do in this situation is you need to capitalize on the extra sleep and start doing more shit with the 12 hours or 14 hours you have through the day. So get up, get into it, and start killing life rather than lousing around the house. If you do that, you'll feel better literally instantly. Cool? Oh, the dough bears are filling me up. David Fife, David said, hey brother, you talked about modafinil before I'm on your vids. 
I have some coming. Do you think it might boost energy or just more focus? Yeah, it'll give you it'll give you more energy, man. It's fucking dopamine. If you have more dopamine, you will have more energy. There's no two doubts about that. So no two ways about that. No doubt about that whatsoever. Right? I wouldn't recommend taking it for a long time, though. And I wouldn't recommend it if you're low on energy one day. You just, oh, fuck it, I'll pop a modafinil. Okay? Modafinil is a double-edged sword. It will increase your energy when you're on it, and then it'll fuck your energy when you're off it because it ruins your sleep quality. Right? You don't want to ruin your sleep quality, man. That is why I'm so careful when I take it. I don't let... I don't prescribe any of my regular clients take it, not even like them. I've got, only got my highest level of clients who I'll actually help out when they're taking modafinil, right? That's, that's it. Otherwise, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not dealing with it because it is so dodgy. You need to be able to look at it on like nearly a daily basis. And you actually need to be fucking trained to use it, cool? That's why a lot of doctors are the ones who are, you know, are really the only ones who are, who are prescribing it. Um, on that as well, I think doctors prescribe it at about 200 milligrams a day. That's fucked. I actually had a good friend who was on it, um, who, was, who was running it at 400 milligrams a day, and fucking lo and behold, he ended up killing himself in a car crash uh, just fuck a, a month or two ago, um, and that was just a fucking ridiculous dose. And I told him, like, mate, why the fuck are you taking so much? And he said, oh, it's what my doctor suggested to do. I've always had narcolepsy, so yeah, I'm like, well, yeah, fuck, bro, but you're not going to sleep at all now. And he said, oh, well, it doesn't matter. At least I'll get more done. So yeah. Oh, anyway guys, get those questions in. I'm going to keep snacking away here. If we've got anything left coming in over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to answer it. So go, shoot. Andy Glazer said, is it true your body can only absorb a certain amount of protein at a time? No, that is not true. Um, that is a silly, silly myth put about by people who are unintelligent. Right? Don't listen to that, big fella. But I like your dedication that you would actually try and plan your... Uh, meal plan around that. Smart thinking. Shane, big Shane, how are you, re- legend? Shane said, hey mate, with my shifts at work, I do a lot of faster training, but make sure I have my BCAs and EAs during my work at a dislocated do. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Faster training is fine. It's sweet. It does nothing. There's no difference between faster and non faster I train faster all the time. Feel great. David said, cheers for that, mate. Sorry about you, mate. Ray's fine, bro. Lived a very, very good life, helped a shitload of people, fucking terrific guy, and he's fucking 70 odd anyway. So he had a fucking good innings, although he had at least another 50 years in him. Mm. Oh my god, it's good. I might say I'm sick of food, I might piss and moan about it, but it fucking still does pretty, pretty taste pretty nice. I've just been having these rice flakes, and with about 500 grams of rice flakes, I put in a litre of rice milk, and then I also put in about uh, about two tablespoons of like unrefined sugar, and mix it in. Plus I have some prunes in there too, and a banana, with every single one. Mwah. So I think I'm going to go over 1100 calories actually, sorry, over 1000 calories today. Which is pretty fucked. Don't know why I'm going to do that. All for the gains. Mm. Another thing too I should say about this. What I'm doing is not sustainable. At all. Like, I enjoy doing this because it's a challenge. It's something new. I want to get fucking big. I mean, shit, I've already put on three kilos in the last week. Um, which, is, which is pretty insane. Um... Uh, but yeah, no, that's that's what I uh, what was I saying? Oh, it's actually it's not sustainable. You just can't you can't do this all the all the time. Oh, there is no fucking way in hell I will be continuing to eat this much food. It it sucks, honestly. It's you know it's uncomfortable. It makes your brain not function well, and, and yeah, it's it's crap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a four week burst on this, and then after that I'm going to drop my calories back down to about five thousand, reduce my carbs, up my fats. The other thing too is having a high carb diet. I don't give a fuck what the research says. You just don't feel as healthy on it. It is not as healthy as a lower carb diet. No way in hell. Don't don't care. Uh, the way that I feel right now, and I've always been a big carb eater. I've always been a massive, massive eater. Mm. It was nowhere near as good. Nowhere near as good. No no doubt in my mind whatsoever. Hey, maybe maybe that's just my genetics. I'm not as cut out for it as other people are, but I definitely don't feel as good. All right, no, all right. I'm going to leave you. 
Take it easy, guys. Thank you for coming. Good to see you again. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Enjoy.